Hello everybody, how are we doing today? Lady Nightscale here, and I'm going to show you how to do a very, very simple texture mod or recolor in Elden Ring. It is a very simple process that you do not have to spend any money on any programs to do. Teach yourself how to do it with this video. Very, very uh, easy. And if you are a streamer like me, or if you are any other kind of content creator, this will be great because you can do what we're going to do here. And what I'm going to show you how to do, which can be applied to different weapons and stuff, we'll, we'll talk about that, is I am going to put a logo on this shield. Now, if you're a streamer, you can put your stream logo on here. For me, because I am participating in Respawn Recruits this year, I'm going to go ahead and put the Respawn logo on there. Shout out to the Respawn Recruits. Now, we know that this is called the Heater Shield. Fantastic. That's all we need is the name. Let's go ahead and get this started. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need a couple of different programs. The first program that you're going to need is you're going to need a program called UXM Selective Unpack. Go to Google. Google will open up for me. There we go. And I'm going to type in Elden Ring UXM Unpack. I'm going to go to the Nexus mod, and I'm going to download it. Very simple. There are two files, because one is a bug fix. Please go ahead and download both. Uh, but it doesn't take much. Get it out. Unpack it. When you open it up, after unzipping it, you will see four things. Res, README, the actual executable, and a config. Now, you'll notice I have five things. I have 00 core or 002 core underscore six. This is the directory that lets you, that lets the game rather know how to interact with Elden Ring. In order to put that in there, which you will need to do, you're going to go to whatever folder or whatever drive you have Elden Ring installed in. We're going to navigate to our Elden Ring folder or file. You'll notice I have a lot of folders here. That's, uh, you won't. We're going to find the 002 core underscore six, copy it, and paste it into UXM. We'll open up UXM, point it in the direction of our executable, and click unpack. This will take about 15 minutes, you know, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter, however fast your computer is will dictate it. Hey, go make some coffee, watch some anime. It'll, it'll get done in a bit. Once that's done... What you'll see is in the Elden Ring folder, you will have seen a massive increase in the number of folders here. This is because what UXM does is it changes it from a neatly packed executable to being able to explore the individual components. This is important because the parts folder is where we're looking. Every one of these DCX files represents a different piece of armor, a different weapon, uh, or a shield, or a staff, or something like that. They are the textures, they are the collisions, everything. Obviously, this is very important if we want to change the texture. Now, there's a lot of them, so be ready for that. The important thing here is I go ahead and I make a new folder on my desktop just to streamline everything, and I named mine Modding Attempts. I'm going to Control-A to highlight everything in the Parts folder, Control-C to copy it, I made another folder in that folder called the Vanilla Parts, and I pasted it. This way, I have a backup of every individual weapon and armor and everything, so if I mess up a mod, I can just copy-paste it. Hey, no harm, no foul. The second program you're going to need is called Yabber. Again, you can just go to Google, you type in Yabber Elden Ring. There is a GitHub for it, uh, or you can go to Nexus. Nexus has both an article that will point you into the direction of the GitHub and help you set it up. It also just has a downloadable a version of it on the mod files, whichever one you prefer. I don't like GitHub's UI, but that's just a personal thing. Either way, get it, unpack it, and you will be good to go. You will notice once you have Yabber, you will have three different files here. You'll have .context, .dcx, and the regular one. We are going to use the regular one. I highly recommend that you make a shortcut and put that on your desktop because that will make the process way, way smoother. Now, the last two programs that you're going to need are you're going to need, uh, well, really the last one program, but two for the way that I should do it, is you're going to need an image editor. Photoshop does work here, but you'll need a couple of programs like the NVIDIA texture tools uh, and the Intel texture tools, I believe, in order to make it work. If you have Photoshop, great. Go and get those downloads. They're both free, and Photoshop is the industry standard for a reason. But I don't like the fact that Adobe charges as much as they do, uh, and I'm poor. 
So <laughs> we, we are going to use the free version. I went and downloaded GIMP. GIMP works perfectly well for this process. The only problem with GIMP is that it does not save into the file format that we need. However, you can also get paint.net. Paint.net does save into the file format that we need. Now, paint.net is a very, very, very lightweight uh, image editor, so go and download that. Again, I will have links to all of these in the descriptions, no problem whatsoever. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started. Now, you might be saying, hey, Nightscale, I know you said you wanted to change the heater shield, but none of these are called heater shields. How are you going to know? Well, I'm glad you asked that uh, voice in my head, indicative of early onset schizophrenia. There is a list on Nexus Mods. You can search this up by just going to Google and typing in Elden Ring item codes. That has every one of the item codes already listed out. So I'm just going to control F. I'm going to type in heater and find the basic heater shield. WP underscore A underscore 2020. Oh, I should point out in some of these cases, you'll see uh, a regular version, like a, you know, this is, this for example is BDF1240. This is BDF1240 underscore L. I believe the L is for either the low res or the high res version. I'm not sure which, I'm, I'm guessing the low res. Uh, so. That's only if you're messing with your textures on a very, very high computer or a very, very low one. If you do this process and it doesn't change, just use the underscore L instead of the standard one. Uh, another thing I should point out is that the armor sets, uh, some of them will have FMM models. That is because a select few armor sets are different for characters of body type B, the female body type. Uh, and the F is the indicator for that version of the armor. The M is the unisex version, for which is most armor in the game and the male version for ones that are separate. Either way, uh, which, what was the one we looked up? Uh, 2020. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to go to WPA 2020. We're going to find it. Again, I'm not using the low textures, so I'm just going to grab the basic one. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to Mod Parts. I'm going to make a new folder here, and I'm going to call this uh, Respawn Heater. And I'm going to paste it. Now, in order to mess with the DCX file, we have to unpack it so that we can actually mess with the texture. That's why we're just going to drag it over to Yabber. And Yabber will turn it into a folder that we can explore. I'm going to drill down through the very simple path until we find TPF. The TPF file is the one that has the texture in it. We're going to unzip the TPF with Yabber. Again, just dragging it over. Open that. You'll see that we have three files here. Now, A is the actual colors and textures. M is the metallic shine. If it is a metallic piece of equipment, this is where the shine map is. I'm not quite sure what N is because I'm not able to open it, but if I'm correct, I suspect that this is related to either the 3D texturing itself or to the weather effects. Either way, it doesn't actually really matter too much because I haven't found a piece of equipment that I've needed to mess with the N in order to do what we're doing today anyway, so... There you go. So I'm going to go to A because it has our actual textures here. And I'm going to open with GIMP. Now, this is very important. When you open with GIMP, make sure not to load the MIP max. We want to uncheck that. Click OK. And we have the texture wrap for the shield. Let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just select using the lasso select you can be kind of sloppy here elden ring there's a lot of movement in the combat so if you're a couple of pixels off you're really not going to notice i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to select the whole face of the shield i'm going to go to colorize and let's make this a deeper color. Like, right there is good. You can make this whatever color you want. It doesn't actually make a difference. Now, I'm also going to import as layer. And this is kind of, you. technically, you could be done right here. If you just wanted to make the shield black, then there you go. You're done. You're complete. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to import as layer. If I can find exact, open as layer. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to go to my desktop. Oh, hey, my X still has a folder. Oh, well. Um, I'm going to find... It. 
respawn logo. I am blind. There you are. You can find the respawn logo. And we're going to put it right dead center. Now we'll clean this up a little bit. We'll just, oh, I don't want that huge texture. Let's just grab this standard one. And we're just going to give this a quick cleanup. Doesn't have to be too smooth. Because again, this is just a proof of concept. Bring with me here. I'm hoping this will actually erase and not uh, just be white here. Yeah, white. Oh no, it will just be white. Well, that's unfortunate. Easy way to do this. Again, just lasso tool. Forgive that bit of a stumble, super unprofessional, I know. Scuffed as hell, but if anything describes me, my streams, and my content, scuffed as hell is accurate. But we have fun, and that's all that matters. Let's go ahead and we will cut that out, delete that layer, make a new layer, and post it. Great, awesome, fantastic. Now, we do need all of these layers to be, uh, well, one layer. We can't have multiple ones. So let's go ahead and scale this up just for, hello. Away. Scaling this one. Go. Scale this up just to make it nice and neater. The dead center. I'm going to merge down the layer here so we have one solid layer. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to flatten image. Now, again, this is a little bit more involved than it needs to be. You could have been done a while ago if all you wanted to do was make the, the sheet darker, but this will show you how to put a logo on if you're a content creator like me. I'm going to go to export. I'm going to export it as the exact same file name. This is important. Don't change the name. You are going to overwrite it. Flattening the image like we did before is also very important. Now, make the compression BC3 and generate MIP maps. This is why we didn't want to load the MIP maps before. We want to generate new ones. So I have it set to BC3, generate MIP maps, export. Fantastic. We can now close GIMP, discard changes, don't care. Uh, the reason that we are discarding changes there is because what it's asking us to do is to save it into GIMP's proprietary format in case we ever want to edit the image again. I, you can if you want to, it just doesn't matter for the process. Now, like I said, GIMP doesn't save it into the proper format. We saved it into BC3. We actually need it to be saved into BC7. So we're going to open it up to paint.net. All we're going to do is just go to save as... Exact same thing, save it as the same file name as a dot, uh, .dds. Settings, BC7 sRGB DirectX 11 compatible. It has to be this format. It has to be. So go ahead, do that. You are not generating any new MIP maps, so don't check that off. All you're doing is just converting the file type. Okay? And we can close that. Go back one step. You can delete the old TPF file because it is no longer valid. Drag the folder with the modified TPF back to Yabber. This will repackage it into a new TPF. We can now delete the folder. Back all the way out. Again, same process. Delete the old DCX. Drag the folder with our modded thing back to Yabber. It will create a new DCX. Delete the folder. We can now copy that DCX. And we can bring this over into that. our mod engine. Uh, I probably should have mentioned that you need mod engine too, but if you're modifying Elden Ring, this, this is like saying that you need Skyrim script extender for modifying Skyrim. It's just a thing that you can. Um, go and download mod engine 2 on nexus again very simple thing elden ring mod engine 2 you can do this at this step it doesn't make a difference you can get it on nexus mod you can get it on github again whichever one you like i like using nexus mod but you can get it here 
grab it on GitHub, unzip it, and create a folder in it called mod, create a name called parts, and we're going to paste our part there, wp underscore a underscore 2020. Now, run the game using the launch mod underscore Elden Ring uh, file. And I made a shortcut so I can do it from my desktop, or you can just run it directly from the file here. What this will do is Mod Engine 2 will launch the game in offline mode so that you don't have to worry about getting banned, and it will inject any new textures or scripts that you have. This is why Mod Engine is super important. Load up. And there we go. We have now modified the heater shield to represent Respawn Recruits 2023. You can use this process to change anything. Make a shield a different color with a logo. Make a weapon a different color. I'll give you some examples of what I have done with these modifications. Now, the important thing to remember is that this is overwriting the texture. This is not creating a new item. But let's give some examples. Uh, we'll go to... We'll go to Death Flame. Actually, we'll go to Night Skin. And Elder Ring will take a year and a half to load, as it always does. But just to give some examples of the things that we've changed here, uh, you will notice that I now have the Beast Crest Heat Shield, which on this character I have uh, modified to have my stream logo. You will also notice that I am using the Guardian Sword Spear, which normally is bright gold and looks very Paladin-esque. I don't like playing Paladins, I like playing Death Knights and stuff. So I have modified it to be black. Uh, with a purple accent there, but it's the exact same weapon, it just looks different. You can even take this a step further, and if you are decent at 3D modeling, uh, I am not, so I had to go and download this model. Uh, this, this mod is on Nexus, so, you know, hey, I will put that on the Discord or the description, because I want to shout out, I don't want to take credit for it. But this is the exact same process that is used to do things like change a weapon into Frostborn. Now, the Frostborn mod that I downloaded changed the broadsword to look like Frostborn. Well, I didn't want the broadsword to look like uh, Frostborn. I wanted the Death Flame Poker to look like the broadsword. Because I love the Death uh, the uh, Death's Poker, but I hate the way it looks. So all I did was I downloaded it, I renamed it to the proper item code, and I modified the Kite Shield to have the Diablo Necromancer image on it. And now we have a Death Knight wielding Frostmourne. This whole process was just done with a couple of instances of the process I showed you before. And there you go. That is how you make a very simple texture and model swap for Elden Ring. Uh, thank you very much for coming and hanging out uh, for my TED Talk here. And um, go ahead and follow my socials. You'll find them all in the description. Again, all the programs will be in the description that I used for this, as well as the Frostborn mod, uh, so that we can do that shout out. Uh, represented Respawn Recruits in 2023. Hopefully, we go far. I am at the top 300. And um, congratulations to everyone else that made it here with me. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.